Hello and welcome back to Grand Arena Championships. I'm Heathen13, and this is a new season. Season 15, Week 1, Round 1. We are back to 3v3. I hope this season goes as well as my last season went. My first opponent for this 3v3 GAC is Dark Knight Dan 80. So let's look at the matchup. All right, the overview on the hotpot shows that I have the majority of green on my side. So we will zoom in. And statistics wise, I do hold the advantage in every category. Dark Knight Dan has just under 400,000 lifetime banners. Based on his GAC history, it looks like he plays most of the time, but he doesn't always attack and when he does, I'm not sure how serious he is about GAC. When we match up our rosters, you can see he does have a little advantage on overall GP, but my top 80 and top 65 are a bit higher. I have a 25 Zeta advantage along with over a 30 average speed advantage. I also have 13 more G13s, but Dark Knight Dan has a significantly deeper roster than I do. He has 98 G12s compared to my 32. I have a huge advantage on mods as well. And while I have an overall advantage on relics, Dark Knight Dan has six tier seven relic characters to my two. All right, looking at the meta characters, you can see Dark Knight Dan is missing a few key characters. He doesn't have Jedi Knight Luke, General Skywalker, and he doesn't have Malak. So I'm gonna to look to exploit those missing characters on how I set my defense today. Looking at ships, you can see Dark Knight Dan also doesn't have the malevolence. So what does Dark Knight Dan have? Let's look at his roster. He is running a Jedi Knight Revan squad in arena, three tier seven relics there. He also has a relic seven Palpatine, a relic seven crew, a relic seven original Kylo Ren, He's got a decent Padme team, and he has a couple other random relics here and there, but those are generally lower relics. All right, let's take a look at the board. Dark Knight Dan already has attacked. I'll tell you what I've done on defense and why I made the choices I made. So based on the meta characters he's missing, I decided I would just try to stonewall him completely. Down here on the bottom, I set my Jedi Knight Luke team with a really fast Shock T. Not super fast, I was able to get her up to 314. So not the 340 or 350 that I'd like, but the best I could do with the speeds mods I had available. Still, it looks like that stopped him down here on the bottom. He did get through my Grievous and my Bastila team. Up top, I decided to put my full Darth Revan squad here. He hasn't touched it. He hasn't touched the top at all. I have a feeling that he has the teams to get through a few of these, but I don't think he can get through the Darth Revan team. Figuring that he wasn't gonna be able to get through either the, the front zones. In the back, I went a little lighter. You can see I put kind of the Lando trash, a really bad Karth squad. So nothing great back here, but I didn't expect him to get back here. And then ships wise, I put a Thrawn team and a finalizer. Again, I don't think he's gonna get back to these either. So what did he set for me on defense? So he put a pretty decent crew squad here, along with a Jedi training Ray, a boss bounty hunters, and a Kira Ness squad. He also put a very good Jedi Knight Revan team and both Knight Sister squads. So as always, I will start here on the bottom I'll open up the back so we can see what's back there. I'm not gonna be too conservative here in the bottom. I think I have plenty of offense to get through all of his teams. So we'll go right in on this Jedi Knight Revan and I will take my gas squad and we'll bring Ahsoka and we'll bring Echo along the way, which might be overkill. Again, I probably could undersize it, but it's the first week. It's the first match. The last thing I want to do is uh, drop a battle early for no reason. There we go. It looks like we will get a 52. Even some hits on Hoda. All right. Next, we will take on the tougher of the two. 
Night Sister squads, and we will use my crew plus Watt on this. Which is somewhere down here. So we'll go ahead and give the uh, weapons tech to Executioner right off the bat. We will stun Zombie. We'll put the tanking tech on crew. And then go, go to work on Talzin. As long as I get the kills with Executioner, they will not come back. Other than Zombie, of course. And we'll just uh, see if we can't get them down before Talzin can get a bunch of plague out. She's gone. Now for Daka. Let's stun Zombie again so she can't taunt. And now it's just a matter of can I get back all the banners on what? Probably not. But a 53 is fine. All right, for this other squad here, uh, they do have Alkalite, but they don't have Zombie. So it's not the normal Night Sister Cheese where Alkalite goes into stealth and you need to have some AOE in order to handle it because as soon as you kill Asajj and you kill Spirit, then it doesn't matter that Acolyte is in stealth. So seeing as how that is the case, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a shot with my Geos. And actually, the middle ability here from the uh, Brood would have actually taken Acolyte out of stealth anyway. So it could have been used even if they did have Zombie on this team. But I don't think I would have done it with Zombie on the team. But in any event, yeah, this Acolyte uh, configuration doesn't do what... Uh, what the normal Acolyte cheese kind of does. Alright, let's open up the back and see what he left me. I'm not sure what to expect, honestly. Ah. So some Ewoks, some Phoenix, some Karth, and some Geos. Alright, well, let's go back up to the top and we'll take care of those teams first. I think I have too much offense. The only team that makes me worry at all is his crew team. Uh, I'm going to take my Jedi Knight Revan squad against that. I hope I have enough damage to get through crew. We'll see. We're going to go ahead and mark Executioner right off the bat, though, uh, because that's their damage. So let's actually just go right after the kill and see if we can get him out of there. There we go. So now it's just a matter of taking these other guys down and trying to end with as many banners as possible. And once again, hoping that I have enough damage on board to get through that Relic 7 Kylo Run unmasked. I think I should. I don't anticipate it being a problem, but you never know. I don't have any healing immunity or anything on this uh, team in threes so it's quite possible they just kind of tank it out and I'm left needing to uh, take a cleanup squad if that's the case that's what I'll do I'll just keep passing back and forth calling my assists trying to get uh, Yoda to get some big hits in all the while doing my best to keep all my banners if possible. Keep spreading the foresight and whenever the mark comes up, we'll go ahead and use it. big hit should do it ah, next turn oh now we got him all right 
All right, let's see if we can get Jolie's health back up. We'll call him for assists when we can. And we'll make sure we have Foresight on the whole time so that we don't lose anything else. Uh, let's just double check that I'm all healed up completely. And there we go. All right. These other teams, almost any of my teams could be used. We'll do this bounty hunter one first. I'll bring JTR. There are two feats right now that I'm considering, but I, I don't feel comfortable doing one of them. The one where it's uh, Vet Han and Vet Chewie needing kills. My Vet Han and Chewie are just not very good. So even if I brought them in uh, with another team, with somebody else to carry them, they wouldn't be getting the kills. So I don't know that that is a feat that's even really in play for me. The other one where we have to win with Poe and Finn, uh, we'll definitely do that one. So we're just going to take uh, Boba or with Django, whoever that was, down. And we'll work on Bosk, get the burning up. And then hopefully we'll get Illuminated Destiny here soon so we can uh, get back our protection on R2. Oh, that was dumb. No reason to try and hide because Danger's already uh, stealth. But it will keep passing the, you know, extending the battle enough so we get that Illuminated Destiny. Maybe we can get it twice. We'll see. And a stun. Nice. So it looks like probably next turn on Illuminated Destiny. There we go. And almost got it all back. Let's see if we can... We're not going to be able to extend. And Dangar's going to try and steal more banners with those uh, thermals. With those bombs. So we're just going to go after him and take him down. If we get a 51 or 52, so be it. Alright, next we'll go after the Kira Nest squad. We're going to take in um, Treya, I think. But we'll ditch Scion and we'll pull in Thrawn. And no need to undersize this or anything. We'll just uh, fracture L3. We'll work our way. Uh, we'll isolate Nest. And then we'll just work on Kira until we get our Annihilate off. Back to Nihilus. And honestly, if I would have been thinking about it, I, if the timing would have gone better, I should have fractured Nest and isolated L3. But whatever, it all it works fine. Let's switch it. Let's isolate Nest now. And give that over to Nihilus. And we get the Annihilate. Uh, can I stall long enough to get the protection back on Treya? No, it doesn't look like it. Oh, they counted anyway. Very nice. Let's go for that JTR team. And again, I have more offense than I need. So I'm just going to take... Um, I'm going to take CLS Han and Chewie, and normally I split these teams up so that I can make two teams out of it, but I just don't need the extra squads this time. Uh, I think if I were going after a tougher, if, if my opponent had set a tougher defense, I would have been worried a little more and would have been going for, uh, you know, keeping some in reserve just in case. but. That's just not the way it is this time. All right, he probably left Negotiator if his history is to be believed. So let's take a look at that. So we're gonna go after the Negotiator with my own Negotiator. Uh, we'll just take my normal 
what I would use in arena. And we'll leave a spot open for an undersize. I don't think that's a feat this time, but you know, the banners. Now his negotiator is faster than mine, so I am gonna see if I can't put some pressure here on Anakin. Nope. So he got his AOE off first. And my Anakin's in trouble. So we are gonna I'll just bring in flow and heal up. And let's go with a big hit. Get Plo in there. We'll heal up and we'll get the taunt back over on House Tooth. He'll get his unending di undying loyalty. Unending loyalty. I always forget which one it is. And let's get ours up as well. I should have the advantage here just. The fact that I brought in my Hound's Tooth and he's running a six star Y-Wing. But you never know. Sometimes RNG just doesn't go in your favor. So we shall see. Uh, let's go ahead and bring in Ahsoka. getting pretty sketchy honestly and just lost my flow I definitely could lose this matchup and if I do I will simply bring in my malevolence I actually was thinking that uh, I hate ships for the most part and that I absolutely could lose a mirror like I looks like I will and so I saved three good squads my plan is to take out his finalizer with my home one. And so I knew I had a backup here, but it does suck to lose uh, this one. We did get the Y-Wing out. We got his clone sergeant out. Uh, looks like we're gonna get his Anakin out. So the cleanup is gonna be really simple but sucks to lose all right let's go ahead and take my rebel fleet here against this finalizer and just make sure that we can uh, kill this because if I have to break up my malevolence group for two cleanups we can do that All right, we'll go right after their scav ray and got the uh, armor down thing the protection down debuff so that went well Got Poe out, and let's bring in Cassian and go for the assist here. All right, so that worked the way it was supposed to. All right, let's get that uh, clean up with the Malevolence. And I don't think we have to bring everybody. We'll go with that. I know we've already lost 20 banners from losing, but at least we can uh, salvage something. And of course they get their unending die, undying loyalty up right away. That's a bummer. Um, let's go ahead and we. And go ahead and spread the buzz droids.
And let's bring the spy in. We can get a big hit. We'll force a taunt on his bow so we can get out low. And I don't think he has any reinforcements to bring out, so that's it. All right, well, that sucked, but it just is what it is. Let's come back here in the back. Now, normally, if I see Ewoks, I would be going in with my Nest Solo. However, his Logre has over 100% potency, and my Nest is at like 160. So he'd still have a 40% chance of stunning me. So I'm not gonna, not gonna go ahead and do that. I will bring in um, some clones into that instead. And we will just overkill them. Oh, and I put the uh, turret on the wrong person. I put it on fives instead of rex, but that's fine. Let's put it over on Rex. I like it on Rex better. And there we go. Oh, and that one hit stole a banner. Bummer. All right, here's where we're gonna go with the feet uh, against the Phoenix. We'll bring in so we need regular old Finn and regular old Poe, both of which are not very good at all for me. But I'll bring in Wampa. Uh, so even if it, Finn and Poe do poorly, Wampa will uh, hopefully just kill them all. But we'll do our best to see if we can get a stun on Kanan. Nope. No reason to taunt. So we'll just let uh, Wampa do Wampa things. So there goes Kanan. And let's get Zeb. You know, these are all gear 12 um, Phoenix, and they all had their Zeta, so it's not like they're a bad team. Just Wampa likes to kill Phoenix, I guess. 53. All right, so we've got two left, uh, this Karth and Geos. Let's go ahead. I kind of want to solo with Vader, but we'll bring in Palpatine just in case. I, again, too much on offense. Uh, because I was really betting that, uh, that he wouldn't be able to get through my front zone, it, it really let me just kind of put much weaker teams in the back than I normally would have and uh, consequently you know I have a whole lot more on offense than I think I will in a normal round well, let's see if that will kill him yeah oh but didn't get the ability block so he definitely could summon a new one unless I can get the kill here which we did all right yeah I mean I guess it's good that I didn't solo with Vader help maybe helped a little either that or he cost me banners one or the other and we've got a cart squad left so I've got Padme let's just go with Padme let's um yeah honestly I it's one of those things where I outgear them and it's not going to be close, I don't think. And so kind of doesn't matter what I do, I don't think. We'll just, yeah, destroy them. And wouldn't you know, that's one of another low banner win so not very efficient um 26 47 not the greatest score ever dropping that fleet battle really hurts but at least i came prepared 
knowing that could have been a possibility. The funny thing about that was I was using my negotiator instead of my malevolence because my malevolence generally gets me low banners. So I figured, let's bring my negotiator and do a mirror match. That will be more. And then I lost. So joke's on me. Um, I don't think Dark Knight Dan is going to come back to do any more battles, but if he does, I will post that in the comments below. I want to thank Dark Knight Dan for the battle. I want to thank you all for watching, and I will see you in next round.